Hey Pacific Plankton, how's it going? Hey Sarah. Uh, I'm pretty sure they're eggs. They are pink and little and uh... And they're inside the um... Inside the molt. And they're just spinning around. They're all roughly the same size. Hey, Rihanna, how's it going? Just uh, playing around with this water bear sample I have. No, they don't look like ciliates at all. Uh, they're not really moving like ciliates either. Um, I mean, they are moving around, but ciliates are usually like a lot faster. <laughs> you want to see the water bear? So well, that's just the molt right there, but I actually, and there's a, yeah, they're moving inside. Uh, the thing that's moving around is actually a uh, nematode worm. So like down here, there's a bunch of squirmy ne nematodes and they're moving the entire stack of stuff around. The uh, little water bears are just kind of hanging out in there. The eggs, I'm pretty sure those are eggs. They're just spinning. They're not doing like silly things. And when we've seen the water bears before and they had little uh, egg sacs or eggs in them, this is the way they always looked, like little balls inside the molt. So the fact that they're spinning is kind of good news because it seems to suggest that they're still alive. <sighs> yeah, these are okay. Hey, Micah. Uh, I do what I want, you know, sometimes I stream late. Sylvia's gone to bed, or she's at least in the bedroom upstairs. I'll go find the actual water bear. There's a water bear in here uh, that's a similar size to that one. Uh, in the molts, I mean. Those are all nematodes. This is just an open drop of water. Uh, oh, here it is. Here's the actual water bear. Um, you can see it's a little bit different than the kind we had before. It's got uh, sort of a little five star or six star shape around its face. And then it's got two little antenna like structures coming off of its cheeks. We saw ones like this in um, that were really small in one of the samples from my yard once. Uh, but this one is huge relative to those. You can really see it moving around. Yeah, it's huge. Uh, <laughs> I can, for the SCM, if it's a... Uh, yeah, he's got little baby claws, and he's got a little... His newt newt has got this, like, you know, thing around the face, which is pretty cool. I have one on a cover slip that we can put on the SEM uh, that's the same type. And this slide I think I'll probably keep, uh, you know, with the eggs on it. I don't want to lose the eggs. Oh, he's got disconnected from his little pile of junk he's been crawling around on. Yeah, that's a water bear. Uh, oh, I guess uh, Sarah doesn't have their sound on, so if somebody could type, uh, that's a water bear. You see stretching out. A little earlier I had um, 
another water bear that was like this that I pulled off and put on a cover slip by itself, but it was eating a nematode worm, and the worm was basically stuck in its little snoot, snoot, snout, and uh, it was still sort of squirming around inside of its snout. Uh, it was pretty cool. And um, what's happening to it? It's just, that's what they do. They crawl around. Uh, they've got their two back claws are usually for kind of holding on, grasping things. And their front six claws are for sort of exploring, basically. And yeah, he's got a sweet little nose. Um, oh, there comes a nematode. It better watch out because I swear I saw this one eating a nematode uh, earlier. And they they seem to be like kind of grasping around for them. Uh, I don't know if we catches it, we'll see what happens. But it's getting awfully close to danger, if you ask me. The other one that was eating was a little bit smaller than that. <laughs> I didn't do anything. Uh, I just uh, pulled it out of a sample, that's all. And it's just hanging out. No acid. No nothing. The, uh, the camera I have on my microscope's not really set up for movement, but it does an okay job of capturing it. It's just it's a little, you know, the colors get a little dragged out. Now I'm streaming. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. We just got a little water bear. Uh, well, actually, it's a pretty big water bear. And, um... It's kind of flailing around. I found another one, and I found some uh, a molt that was full of little water bear eggs, too. Oops, he found it. Now he's safely crawling around on the surface of this thing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, probably hard to find any in a uh, glass of water. I have to really go looking for him. Um, and haven't had much success until recently even finding them. So, probably not in your tap water. Oh, he's managed to move around. Up here, he's coming out the bottom side of that stack of junk. He's doing a little exploration. I was really pretty excited because uh, there's another nematode. This one's not quite as squirmy. There's another nematode over here. There's a lot of worms. Uh, I saw a rotifer in here as well earlier. Oh, here it is. There's a little rotifer. He also has a little foot that they attach by, but they don't have the legs. And see he's just switched positions. Rotifers don't get much credit but they're basically as hardy as water bears with respect to being dried out and all the other sort of most of the other sort of extreme conditions although they're not quite as good with all of them as water bears are. Nematode that nematode's dancing around, but so this is what I was looking at when we first started the stream, which is I'm pretty sure those are little water bear eggs inside of their molt. And you can see them kind of spinning around um, inside the molt itself. The worm's spazzing out. Yeah. Let's see. <laughs> uh, what's going to happen to Water Bear when we're done with the slides? Well, one of them I've collected for the SEM, uh, but these little guys, the ones in the 
egg casings here. I'm hoping to sort of keep them around and get them to hatch. I haven't seen any rotifer eggs, just that rotifer and a couple of rotifers sort of crawling around in the samples. Yeah, the, um, the normal process for the water bear, the bigger one is probably it would just dehydrate and then uh, go into its uh, cryptobiotic state called a ton state, where they just kind of hang out. But the molts are pretty cool by themselves. You can actually see it's got all the little claws still got its little beaky face. You can see it was the same type as the one that was over there. It's got that star-shaped thing around its mouth. So they're, if they are eggs, which I, I think is very likely, they belong to that sort of reddish bear at the top of the screen, uh, same species probably. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, the SEM is probably no good for the, the water bear, but... Um, Gubu is still sitting here on this slide uh, and hasn't moved. So I, I keep Gubu in his own little slide. He just sits on it. And uh, we haven't rehydrated him in a while, so he's just kind of been hanging out there, probably in his dried out state. Uh, do I know if they have abundant heat shock proteins? Well, uh, when they're in the ton state, when they're in their cryptobiosis state, uh, water bears can handle temperatures that are extremely high. Um, when, when they're just uh, hanging out in the water like this, they're pretty sensitive, and I don't think that um, I don't think that they would be able to handle like uh, temperature shocks, either cold or hot. Um, they're they're not. Uh, Pacific plankton said they're not indestructible, or maybe that was Mallory. Um, the the ton state is like their, it's like a special uh, setting for them where they become dehydrated and they turn into these little sort of balls that are super well protected. Um, hey, blonde ponytail, how's it going? Uh, so Sarah Dance Painter asked, "What's a molt?" Um, molt is a way for the organism to grow bigger. And for female water bears, they lay their eggs inside their own casings, and then they molt and leave the eggs behind, which is what looks like is going on here. Uh, the life cycle for these dudes is probably uh, they're going to be eggs for a while, and then presumably they hatch into little tiny water bears that grow to be big water bears and that lay eggs in themselves again after they mate. Um, so I think that's basically their cycle. Yeah, the molt is basically just like a skin for the organism. Uh, that This isn't like a living bear with a bunch of things crawling around inside of it. It's, it's just this exoskeleton. Yeah, I don't know. How do you convert Excel to PDF? I think you can just tell it to save to PDF. Uh, what do they shed? Oh, it's like in order to get bigger, like all things that um, have a hard exoskeleton in order to get bigger, um, their only option is to basically uh, come out of their own skin. And so they, they just um, shed their skin basically and um, leave the, the skin behind. Um, the same thing happens to insects. A lot of insects will molt. Um, uh, ostracods molt. M most of the um, aquatic organisms that start off as sort of either aquatic insects or uh, like copepods, they all molt. Um, in some cases, many times, I think copepods will molt, molt through um, six or seven stages of Nauplius before they become juveniles. Uh, let's see. Oh, nematodes. Yeah, so um, I did see one, as I mentioned before, a little bit earlier in the stream. I saw one eating a nematode, uh, and it was of this variety. Uh, it had the nematodes stuffed in its little snout. 
and the worm was still kind of squirming around for a little bit and then it stopped uh, but I think it's a little bit smaller than the ones that were in here so I don't know if it caught a baby or what um, but that was pretty cool <laughs> save as PDF <laughs> hey very little beef how's it going uh, there's a lot of advice to Mallory about how to print a PDF from her Excel file. <laughs> uh, are the eggs just diffusing in there, or are they moving around for some reason? I think they're actually moving around. Um, I don't think that they're... Uh, it may not be clear to you. It's definitely clear in the light microscope. They are, internally, they're spinning. I'll ramp it up a light to, I'm uh, sorry, one magnification. I think it'll be a lot clearer to you uh, once I do that. Let me check to make sure that, um, yeah. So you can see them in there. Uh, they, they're kind of spinning around inside the, um, let's see if I can fix that. It's a little over bright. Ah, there. So you can see they're actually sort of spinning around inside the, um, the molt and they kind of glisten as they spin, so you can see them. Uh, and I don't think that movement is accidental. I think that's, I mean, some of it's the table vibrating from my arm being on it. Uh, but I think that you can see the eggs are like zooming around in there. So, and like I said, I don't think that those are ciliates. They don't move or, or seem like ciliates to me, but I suppose it's possible. I can't see any little hairs or anything, but they must be moving around somehow. They mostly spin. You don't need to have a printer, Mallory. You can tell it to print to PDF. Uh, what's, uh, what's a water bear? A water bear is a type of animal, a small um, semi-aquatic animal that um, has eight legs and a little newt newt snout on the front end. And, uh, and they wander around and Places that are, you know, uh, wet and dry, typically. So there's a rotor for creeping in on us over here. Here's one. It's a little rotor for crawling around. And there are some ciliates in here. There goes one, zooming around. Um, but they don't look anything like the ones inside the water bear. There goes one. And let's see. Let's see if I can find the actual water bear again. That's the nematode. It's another nematode. There's some ciliates right there. See how they move around super fast? Um, oh. The mama water bear or a mama water bear is up here. It's crawling around in this stuff. It's probably just looking for food. Maybe maybe it will hunt down one of those nematodes for us. It's really sort of challenging because I didn't put a cover slip or anything on this. And so uh, there's a lot of three-dimensionality. And the water bear is super active, so it's constantly kind of climbing around. Um, but you can see that it's got like a little star-shaped like spines ar around the out outside of its mouth, which is pretty cool. <laughs> uh, you were promised cool diatoms? Uh, well, if you're bored with the water bear, I've got a whole um, rock samples over here filled with diatoms and I could pull them out if you want. They're living, they're crawling around, but I don't remember seeing any Eunotia in it. 
um, or if they were, they weren't very common. Uh, I was collecting a bunch of stuff, so this is actually um, from an, a stick I found in the forest that I picked up on my way out while I was hiking. And um, it was covered with lichen, and I thought, oh, well, none of my other lichen worked out very well in the past, except for when it was on a stick. And that pattern has continued. So I picked up a bunch of lichen over off of old logs um, from a bunch of different places, and the only ones that actually had the water bears were on the stick. So I don't know what's up with that. But um, it seems like I have the best luck with lichen growing on sticks. So I'm just going to stick with that as my uh, uh, choice in the future. And I also, as I mentioned, I collected a few, uh, he's sort of bridging from one pile of junk to another, which they do quite a bit, but it's ended up with like a lot of rocking around. It's a big water bear. Uh, but this is actually the largest ones that I've seen. I've had water bears before and we've streamed a little bit of water bears before. Um, they were really little ones. And these, this one is huge. And it seems determined to hide underneath stuff while I'm trying to get a good picture of it. So anyway, so you can see they have eight legs and a little, a little snoot on their face. And it's probably just roving around for food. They're pretty active when they're active. Junk pile crawling, yeah, that's what they do. Um, I tried looking at lichen from rocks, and in fact, I've got a dish of that right here, and I've got a second dish of that right here, and I couldn't get anything off of any of those. Um, they, they didn't have any water bears on them, and I've not had any luck with moss whatsoever. I know they're called moss piglets, but as far as I'm concerned, they're more like lichen piglets. Um, I mean, they like to eat moss, so I suspect that's partly where they got the name from. Oh, what's this? Oh, that's a rotifer. I think it's safe. It's a little too big, I think, for that water bear. I think our little micro... Oh, there's a dead mite of some kind right there, that red-colored stuff. Eh kind of underneath the edge of everything right in here. Let's see if I can, this thing right here is a mite, but it's not a living mite. This is, little nematodes are always squirming around, messing everything up. It's a pretty small little area, just... Nice, because then I don't have to look too far to try to find stuff. And see, that's the edge of the bubble out here. A bubble of water, I mean. So... There's not a whole lot of room for these things to run around on the slide. Not sure what's going on in there. Looks like maybe there's some more eggs. Still doing its junk crawling thing. Uh, have you seen Demodex before? <laughs> um, we actually spent a whole stream uh, looking at eyebrows and eyelashes, trying to find them, and um, had no luck. Uh, and uh, I mean, I've seen pictures of them, but we've never been able to get any of them. 
and I thought for sure they would be in um, in my eyelashes or something. So I pulled several of them out just playing around the night before that stream, and I couldn't find any um, or even a trace of anything like them in my eyelashes. But uh, we also tried some older people, some older professors in our department, but we only took their eyebrow hair. And I think maybe there's, they're more likely to be in the eyelashes than in the eyebrows. Um, but they, you know, they burrow into sort of the base of the follicle, especially during the day. And um, so I, um, I thought for sure we'd find some, but we didn't see anything really, or anything that even looked like one or could have been mistaken for one. So no luck on that front. I've seen a lot of mites before, uh, especially this dead mites in these sort of lichen and, and moss samples. It's pretty common to find some mites, uh, but usually it's just a husk, like the organism's dead or gone or it's a molt. Um, I haven't, I think only one time I've ever seen a living mite and it looked kind of like a water bear to be honest except it only had four legs and it didn't have a clear like snouty head like a water bear typically has. But this is the first time I've seen the eggs moving around inside of a water bear. take it as a good sign that they're probably healthy. I don't know how long it takes for them to grow, but I can't imagine it's more than a couple of days. Um, so, you know, I could take this moss that we collected from other places and see if we could get them to live in it, maybe. Um, might be, might be beneficial for them, I don't know. Let's see, inter, are you trying to ask me, are they international? Blonde ponytail? Um, Good news, everyone. There was a follow. Um, hey, Lemon, thanks for the follow. Uh, oh, you think you need to scrape them? Maybe. They mostly live in the hair follicles, yeah, but I plucked out the actual, like, eyelashes and I could see the follicles in the light microscope around the eyelash and they weren't, wasn't anything in mine. Um, so if you're, if you're asking me, are water bears international blonde ponytail? They, they're found everywhere. Um, they're not just in North America or anything like that. Um, they're very widespread. What are we doing? I'm looking at, um, so this thing here in the middle of the screen... Uh, right here is the molt from a water bear. It's jiggling around a little because it's my arm on the microscope, but you can see the, the water bear. Let's see if I can focus it for you. The water bear's claws right here, and that's its snout. Uh, but this is just the exoskeleton. And then um, this uh, stuff moving around on the inside right here, these like little pink balls that are moving around are, I think, the water bear's eggs. And... The, that's the way that water bears lay their eggs, is inside their previous molt, and this is roughly what they should look like. So I'm expecting that eventually they'll escape from here. It looks like one of them's working its way out already. Somewhere around the tail end here. Or maybe it's just trapped in the tail end. But there must be an opening somewhere for the water bear because it, it escaped. So when they get big enough, they probably will work their way out of there. And then... Uh, hopefully we'll have a bunch of little baby water bears. Um, I've also got some actual water bears in the sample, not just the eggs, and some rotifers. As I mentioned, here's a little rotifer right here. It's hiding around inside of this material. That is a nematode moving stuff around. And there's an actual water bear right here. 
so you can see it crawling. It's under a bunch of junk. And that nematode's probably getting awfully close to trouble if it decides it wants to eat it. See their little claws? Little star-shaped face. Like little vacuum cleaner faces. They like to use it to suck the living parts out of things. Sometimes they'll eat moss or whatever. Um, some of them are carnivorous. Just sort of rooting around in the junk pile here looking for food, I think. How long before the eggs hatch? I have no idea. Uh, what's the black stuff? Well, that's just stuff that's, um, we're looking at stuff in transmitted light, which means that it's not actually black, it's just thick. So uh, it's plant material, probably pieces of lichen, which is what I scraped this sample from. And uh, because the light in a light microscope like this is coming from the bottom, anything that's kind of, uh, thick or opaque, doesn't let the light through, and so it looks black. Um, if I had some other type, oh, user plus number says 14 days. Uh, somebody did a Google search. Um, but we don't know how long since they were laid, you know, like the, lay, the laying of the eggs. So, um, you know, it's going to be however many days since it laid the eggs, minus 14. Shadowy plant pieces, yeah. Dark plant pieces that the water bears nefariously creeping through, looking for nematodes to eat, hopefully. They're mostly translucent, so you can kind of see what they've been eating. Um, except for when they get underneath the opaque plant material. Here it goes. There it goes. It's out crawling around, stretching out its head. Uh, do I have APES treated slides or anything with adhesion? No. Um, I didn't really come prepared. These are just normal. Uh, we're just looking at uh, simple, plain microscope slides and no cover slip or anything on them. Um, I think, uh, my solution for looking at them in the light, in the SEM is I have one that I transferred onto a cover slip. And so I think I'm just going to sputter coat the cover slip. And then for these ones, I'm probably going to try to keep these ones alive. Um, so we might let it dry out on the, um, on the glass slide, or maybe I could transfer it into, um, an environment, like put it in a little bottle or something, uh, so we can keep it a little bit more wet then the rest of the material, and then uh, that way we can maybe get the little water bears to hatch. Uh, and then I'll just put some moss and some of the other material in there with it. Newt, newt. Uh, I knew the number from Journey to the Microcosmos, but forgot it, yeah. I saw a show just yesterday, and I still don't remember. Well, um, you know, it's not critical unless suddenly somebody finds water bear eggs. So, um, and I honestly had no plans to actually find. Yeah, I see you're still talking about Timodex. Um, I actually had no plans to, to find water bears or even stream tonight. I just, um, I had looked through the other moss samples the night before and I thought, oh, I'll just go look at that stick sample and see if there's anything good in it. And, um, I looked through two slides and didn't find anything. Um, and then right before I was about to throw all of it away, I found a water bear right on the edge of a cover slip, um, crawling around. And then uh, I thought, well, I'll go look at some more of that material um, because it's sometimes challenging to get the water bears out of whatever they're in. Um, they, you know, they got claws and it's 
kind of hard to detach them. Oh, it's getting close to that little nematode. Oh, super, it's facing the wrong way. It's crawling up this side of the... Yeah, so I thought, well, I'll just take one more look. And then I found a big one, and we watched it for a little while. And then I found another one that was eating a nematode. And uh, so I transferred that one onto the cover slip. And then I made another batch of sample from the same material and found the eggs and this water bear in the same little droplet. So I thought, well, this would be fun to stream. So, and I haven't done sort of a night stream from the microscope for a while. And uh, Sylvia has gone to bed, so that adds a lot less chaos. And uh, so I thought, well, I'll just do a short little stream where I highlight the little water bears that I found. And I was streaming into the um, Discord, my Discord channel for um, Pacific Plankton and Mallory. And I thought, well, I'll just, maybe I'll do something a little bit more accessible for everybody for these particular little water bears. And then tomorrow, maybe I'll take the one that's on the cover slip and put it on the SEM so we can look at it for part of the stream, um, for the afternoon stream. Let's see, we need a Godzilla versus water bear movie. Uh, like a irradiated water bear maybe? So it's like super big? Um, That's why these are so interesting. They're often not staged. You never know what'll show up. Yeah, I mean, I, I, um, I sort of knew these were in here before I started, but it definitely wasn't staged. I just thought, well, there's, you know, oh, 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 he's, oh, that was close. Almost got in its grip. Um, yeah, so I, you never know what you'll find when you're digging around in samples. Sometimes you get nothing, uh, and for two or three nights in a row there, I didn't get anything. So, um, you know, I was looking at the mosses where I thought, ah, you know, I'll give it a shot. But uh, sometimes you get lucky, and I thought this would be a nice little uh, stream to showcase the water bear because it's, one, it's so big. Uh, relative to other water bears that we've seen. And two, because I already got one of them on a cover slip and I know I can put it on the SEM whenever I'd like. And three, we got eggs, so. I just need to find a way to like, keep this someplace safe, transfer the eggs and see if we can get them to hatch. Because they're still moving around in there. They still seem totally healthy. For those two little ones aren't moving much. These ones are. And we've got to come up with what's the appropriate medium for growing a water bear. Presumably we just have to put them in something that's got moss in it. But um, most of the samples that I've had where I've captured the water bears, the samples haven't lasted super long before I start looking through them and the water bears are all not moving at all and don't seem to be moving even after I add water. So. Uh, probably we want to maybe find a little bit of local lake water to add to them in case they want to eat something from that. <laughs> Staged. Do not kill. Well, I wasn't planning on killing this one. This one I'm planning on keeping. One on the cover slip. I'm planning on putting on the SEM. It looks the same as this one though, so, you know. The water bears, they don't get paid at all, uh, except for, I mean, I did put water in them. The samples didn't have any water when I started, it was a stick. So I feel like I gave it some rope here water. Uh, Pretty cheap cost for a water bear, though. It's a cutie. I also got this. Um, found this pretty cool little beetle. 
yesterday while we were walking Sylvia home from school. So I was thinking about doing a stream where we just looked at bugs. And um, I mean, this one's dead, obviously, because it was just sitting in the, on the side of the road. And we have some bugs in, um, in the collection of things that we've looked at. So that's an option too, for if Mallory's still out there paying attention uh, for tomorrow. But it doesn't really require much prep, so. It's crawled off of the stage a little bit. I wish I could make it look as nice as it does in my eyepieces on this camera. Um, I think I'm gonna eventually find a way to connect my camera up to the camera post at the top of this and uh, stream through my uh, my actual camera which has 20 megapixel and way better processing power than this little thing um, so that you know we get nice clean images and nice clean streams instead of this sort of pixelated junk because it actually looks pretty clear in the light microscope except for the fact that they're so three-dimensional and they're moving around quite a bit. It's hard to keep them all in focus. Um, it would probably be nicer if I had uh, a 4x objective for this microscope, but the lowest power I have is the one that it's on right now, which is 10x. And as a result, there's always a little bit of it that's out of focus because the depth of field in this Good is news, everyone. depth of field is this is smaller than the. Uh, The width of the water bear. It was a follow there from Apple. Thanks for the follow. It startled me. Wasn't expecting the computer to talk to me. There it goes. Now he's cruising around. some sort of little moss ball right there. The nematode's kind of worming its way through. Several nematodes over here squirming around. <laughs> Trying to keep moving things in uh, in focus is hard. Late night followers, it's exciting. Uh, what? Why are we looking at it? Because uh, we like to look at little things. That's that's just what we do. That's the, I got, I got a microscope. Uh, let's see. Uh, what magnification is this? So the eyepieces um, are magnifying things by 10x and the objective is 10x. So those together mean we're looking at about a hundred times the normal size. The um, the camera doesn't actually look through the eyepieces. It looks through uh, its own objective up here, which is also got a slightly different magnification to it than the eyepieces, but, um, but it's close to 100x. hundred times total. Uh, let's see, the magnification on the actual instrument uh, is about the visual magnification. And um, so I can, you know, I can zoom in digitally and that number will change. Uh, but if it's one to one, 
uh, you know, it says it's 471 times, but that's not real. It's just like a digital zoom, basically. And I should double check to make sure that, oh, it's actually half of that, uh, whatever it says in the corner. So if it says 303, it's actually 151 and a half because the 10x objective that's on here, I don't have calibrated yet. Um, I didn't bother to calibrate it for this mi microscope. I moved it from another one. And so it's set on 20x. The, the eyepieces are set on 20, uh, 20x on here. But I'm actually looking at 10x, so it's half of whatever it tells you. So ignore the uh, scale bar thingy. It doesn't know what it's talking about. I could fix it, but it doesn't seem worthwhile right now. Just have everything. This is still 100x. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, the camera has its own uh, objective. Let's see. Can water bears see? Um, some water bears have eyes, and if you look closely at this one, you'll see that it has sort of two little tentacly things coming out of its cheeks. And sometimes water bears have little eye stalks that are on the ends of those. And sometimes those are just little sensory antennas. And it's really hard to see because it's moving around so much. It's got maybe six little things coming around. It's out outside of its mouth. And then these things come off the sides of its head. So <laughs> it might have eyes, I don't know. Uh, You look at little things, I look at huge things. It's also good. Uh, disc, I actually look at big things too, but uh, don't tell anyone. I've got a, uh, a couple of telescopes over there in the actual uh, room with me, and I keep promising to go out and do some sort of a night stream with the telescopes, but um, it's cloudy tonight, so uh, it didn't happen. <laughs> Not another Among Us stream. Yeah, well, we could vote you out, uh, Apple, but I don't think it'll be as productive. And uh, I think that the water bear is probably a little more interesting than that on a lot of, a lot of levels. Oh. Let's see. Uh, is this for research? N no, not really. Um, I mean, it's a research-grade microscope that we're looking at this on, but I mostly look at diatoms from home for research, and I've been playing around with tardigrades a little bit because I have a class I'm teaching this semester called Extreme Aquatic Environments, and of course one of the organisms that live in extreme aquatic environments are water bears. So um, I just wanted to see if I could find some. I've been able to find the Bedelloid rotifers, which are the rotifers that you see sort of swimming around or crawling around or whatever you want to call it in these samples. And then uh, nematodes and also water bears are all sorts of extremophiles. They can handle being wet and dry and um, a lot of different sort of aspects. Uh, how often do they nom on the nematodes? Hey, Chuck, how you doing? Um, I don't know how frequently, but I saw one in right before we started the stream. I had one on another slide, and it had the nematode tail in its mouth, and it was squirming around still, and then it stopped moving. The, the nematode tail did, I mean. And then the water bear went looking for some more. Um, I don't know what else they, these would eat, they, they seem to be searching, it seems to be searching around for something, but uh, they're also semi-transparent and it looks like it, I mean, it doesn't look like its belly is empty, um, but you can s see it's, it seems to be flailing around where the, the worm is right there. So if it's not careful, it might get got. Um, oh, there's a little one. Uh-oh. There's a little nematode. 
I don't know if he's going to find it. That could be trouble. He doesn't seem very adept at finding it. It's definitely squirming all around him. But a little one like that, it might just go ahead and try to eat it. And then it'll be like, you know, slurping up noodles, basically. Uh, hard to see in the phone. Am I a disc? Oh, you're talking to disc, okay. Are these the things that can survive in space? Yeah, water bears are one of the organisms that can handle being in a vacuum. Um, they don't do very well in their living state like this in a vacuum, but in their ton state, they've been able to withstand at least an hour, uh, I think maybe up to 10 hours in a vacuum, and then the organism can still sort of come back from their cryptobiotic state. So they go into sort of like a hibernation state, and then uh, in the vacuum time, and then uh, they pull them out and they're still living. And uh, so they can handle extreme radiation, extreme acid conditions, extreme basic con conditions, uh, the vacuum of space itself, pressures that are as deep as the Mariana Trench. They're found in, uh, in temperatures that are, uh, let's see, they had some crazy number, minus four degrees Celsius. I think they managed to live through just fine. Uh, and then temperatures as high for some of them as um, 300 degrees Fahrenheit for up to 10 minutes or something like that, um, and still came out viable. So, pretty extreme in that sense. Um, <laughs> yeah, they're, they're definitely like, you could put them in super high pressures, pressures that are greater than you could really experience reliably on Earth. And I mean, vacuums also don't occur on Earth very frequently, at least not persistent vacuums. So one of the things that's kind of cool about them is that they're adapted to these non-Earth conditions. And you might ask yourself, why, why would they do that? Uh, it turns out that a lot of their sort of extremophile adaptations are really designed around being dried out and if you can survive being dried out, it turns out you can also survive a whole bunch of these other things. And these little guys that are in the sample that are not the nematodes and not these water bears, which are uh, this bedelloid rotifer back here somewhere. Oh, here he is. Nope, that's a nematode. Here he is. This little bedelloid rotifer right here, they also have the ability to be dehydrated. I mean, all of the sample came from, uh, none of the sample was wet when we started. Um, it was part of a stick with some uh, lichen growing on it. And I just took a knife and I shaved off the lichen and the bark a little bit. And then I put it in, uh, this is my fancy at home sample prep. It's a little plastic bowl my daughter usually eats ice cream or cereal out of. And, uh, and I put some Ropure water in it. So we have a Ropure drinking water tap here. And all of these things that you're seeing basically came back to life from that setting. So this little bedelloid rotifer, these nematodes, the water bears itself, and um, the eggs of the water bear that you can see right here also probably were not active when they were dry. So now that the sample is wet, all of these things basically sort of came back to life or came you know, rehydrated and, and started moving around and reanimated again. Um, you'd like to get a microscope for your niece or nephew. So I have um, a little microscope that my daughter uses that I borrowed from. Um, that I borrowed from my lab, uh, which is this one. And it doesn't actually even have eyepieces. It just has a camera head. Um, and, you know, it's a pretty nice little microscope. This one has a 4X, a 10X, a 40X, and a 60X. And then, uh, the, like a normal microscope, there's a 10X converter that goes to the camera. So all those magnifications are times 10. And um, it's got an XY mechanical stage, which is nice. 
um, and then it's got a little light in the bottom and this thing's really cool because it actually runs on battery or you can plug it in and I've actually even managed to uh, output you can plug it into a video capture card and I could actually run a stream through this if I wanted to um, the nice part about this thing is you could take it into the field it's completely portable so if you wanted to go look at something in the field I would say the only real problem is the quality of the microscope itself is a lot lower than you know my research grade scope um, uh oh we're being raided that's my uh my raid noise we got it we're being attacked by five viewers in anarchy kitchen hey anarchy kitchen how you doing uh it's really great to see you. what you've been making did you cook something are you just working on photos tonight uh anarchy kitchen does a bunch of um yeah, we, we're being attacked. Defend ourselves, uh, Diatom Army. Um, uh, it's nice to see you. So uh, we're just doing a really little casual stream. We're looking at some tardy bear, tardigrades and some tardigrade eggs. So what you're seeing right here, these little round things moving around uh, inside the molt of a water bear are water bear eggs. And I'm pretty sure that's what they are anyway. They're in the right place, and they are the right shape, and the right color. Um, I suppose it's always possible that there's something else, but if it were ciliates, I would really expect that there would be a whole bunch of these other ciliates crawling around in the sample that are similar, and also they don't really move like ciliates. Um, they're just kind of bouncing around inside the molt, and some of them aren't moving, uh, but are also located in the same place. So um, my guess is that they're actually little water uh, water bear eggs and um, there's actual water bear in here as well crawling around and some nematodes and just doing sort of a casual stream uh, from home with those let's see oh you did a dish from Uganda today excellent um, if you don't know Anarchy Kitchen you should really check out uh, his stream it's uh, really cool he's been doing um, uh, he had sort of like a, a whole month or something in the summer where he was making dishes um, from different places in Africa and uh, trying to learn how to cook them. And, um, and now he's taking those same dishes and he's sort of sprucing them up, making them a little bit more, a little less traditional uh, fashion and, uh, and making himself I guess dinner and then um, taking pictures of them and editing the pictures so I think he's been mostly doing that in his streams in the night um, but you should really go check out his work is pretty cool and I like to check in because of course I do a bunch of research in Africa and um, uh, for me it's pretty cool to see some of the food from there um, being prepared and um, I actually think that a lot of the stuff he's been working on is very colorful and uh, interesting for photographic purposes as well. And so he's he's doing something called Nomvember for for the month of November. He's doing one of these dishes every day and taking a picture of it, and then he's building a sort of a little um, daily calendar of food. Not necessarily like an actual calendar, but like you know what he had that day, a journal uh, of what he's eaten, which is pretty cool. So, yeah, pretty cool. Um, let's see, what was going on when, when you raided? I lost track of it. Uh, let's see. Are they really in extreme habitats? They are, in some cases. Um, there are some water bears that live in criconite holes or criconite pits. So if you're not familiar with criconite, that's... Uh, it's like dust that collects on the top of um, glaciers. And then because it's a little bit darker color, it absorbs the sun's energy and it creates a little melt pool that uh, then accumulates more dust. And so these little criconite pits are basically, um, at least during the daytime, they're, they're completely melted but just these little tiny ponds that are, you know, maybe the size of a dish or a, a pan or, you know, maybe the uh, biggest ones might be the size of a desk or something. And uh, 
there's water bears that live in those conditions and they seem to be activated by the cold temperatures. So at least in some instances, there are water bears that sort of embrace the, the ancient uh, sort of extreme conditions, uh, su super cold Arctic settings, and they don't even get activated until the temperatures get to something kind of ridiculous. Now, of course, the water freezes at some temperature. It's, I don't know if it's salt water, but um, probably has some salts in it. And so, um, you know, they have to be able to withstand being frozen solid, which is pretty cool, and then melting the next day when the Kraikenite pits basically become liquid again. So they're pretty cool. Um, <laughs> so just eat them. <laughs> uh, I don't recommend eating them. Uh, I suppose they could survive it, and you could survive it, but... Uh, Let's see, let's see, let's see. Oh, I'm trying to catch up with things here. Um, would this be found in a lake, water, or uh, rivers? Um, well, my sample was actually collected from a stick. So I'm actually, I'll go get it because I think it's funny to show you the stick itself. So I took this stick while I was hiking and it was actually, you know, it used to be together and I broke it. And then I scraped this one, not completely, but I scraped the bark and a little bit of the lichen off. This one still has enough of the lichen on it that you can see it. So it's some of this, uh, I think it's called fructose ly lichen, um, uh, but sort of flaky or leafy shaped light green colored lichen on the stick. And that's actually where I've had the most luck. So I thought, well, I'll just give it a shot. And I just scraped that into the bowl. So um, totally dry. And this was on the, um, the trail. So it had just fallen on the trail I was hiking on on Sunday when I was out hiking with Environmental Science Club. And um, they sort of noticed I was uh, casually swiping moss and lichen as we were hiking around. <laughs> um, so uh, the that worm is just spazzing out. It looks like a translucent rainbow. <laughs> hey devil, Mrs. J, how's it going? Welcome to the crazy stream that I'm doing late at night for some reason, uh, because it seemed like a good idea. Um, <laughs> so uh delightfully photographed food every day yeah you should check it out um yeah the adaptations to freezing are really interesting for for water bear because they good news everyone got another follow thank you for the follow uh what's to say dantes um everything's really small on my computer uh because i'm I'm looking at it through the screen, uh, which is like shrunk down. I don't know why. I guess because the quick actions are open or something. Uh, Dauntless. Thank you for the follow. Um, yeah, so uh, being frozen solid is pretty cool for the organisms. Um, I'm sort of curious if I could continue to find them into the winter because they're on the lichen on the sticks that fall from the tree outside of my house and also over my driveway. And that seems to happen all winter long. Uh, old sticks basically fall off. So I imagine that they, you know, the snow gets on there and melts a little bit and then uh, that probably keeps them going over the winter. Um, Nematodes just need to settle the F down, don't they? They're just like spazzed out all the time. Just, they never stop. Uh, <laughs> crazy worm stream, that's what we're doing. Uh, and water bears, and these are little water bear eggs you can see. Um, as, it's a little out of focus, sorry about that. It's sort of moving around inside of the molt um, here. So 
stop it. Stop it. Uh, the, uh, those are little, I'm pretty sure they're little water bear eggs, uh, that are crawling around inside of the molt. And the water bear, uh, when they shed their skin, when the mother water bear sheds its skin, it leaves the eggs in the skin. So this is where we would expect to find them, and this is their general shape we should expect to see. And um, it's kind of cool because I've never seen them moving around before. Um, I have found some eggs in, in a, uh, a molt before, what I thought were eggs. Um, they were a little bit bigger and they weren't moving at all. So I don't know if that's what happens. They get a little bigger and then they settle down or if they don't stay wet the whole time. I'm not sure what the secret is. I haven't tried to, to save them, uh, but I think we're going to try to save these ones. Nematode's got a wiggle. That's true. Um, I've been also playing around with a bunch of uh, drawings of water bears and uh, drawings of diatoms, and I believe I typed in a code for Redbubble. Hey, I did. Uh, for some reason, you want to uh, buy stuff from Redbubble with the uh, diatom or water bear artwork on it. There's all kinds of stuff that uh, my artwork has been stuck on there. Uh, mugs, stickers. Uh, somebody bought a, a giant throw pillow with a stephanodiscus on it today, which surprised me because I put the throw pillows down as a joke. Um, but apparently people want to hug a diatom, uh, you know, while they're sleeping. So, um, yeah, if you want to do some holiday shopping, and I should also point out that there is, um, on my, uh, on my Discord, I posted a little thing. What was that today? There's so many, there was so much chatter going on today. It got buried, but, uh, there's a little code. It's, uh, use the code gift, gift S 60, um, on that Redbubble site and you can get 20 to 60% off. So, uh, and that's up until November 12th at midnight. So if you want to get 20 to 60% off cool stuff, uh, you could do that. Um, the bottle, yeah, the water bottles look pretty cool and those stickers look pretty cool to me. And, um, they have all kinds of kind of fun stuff on there, uh, that we've stuck the artwork on, uh, funny clocks. Uh, I think that you can also get like, um, Christmas cards or something. I was thinking about making a water bear with a uh, Christmas card, uh, a theme, like a little, you know, Santa hat or something on them, um, you know, for people. Uh, and then all the money that, um, that we make from that goes to student research. So I'm not actually taking any money from it. Um, the same with the subs and anything else that we try to develop money for. Uh, yeah, Newt, Newt Nation. That's, uh, that's, uh, what we're calling ourselves sometimes. It's a diatom army or new newt nation uh, because we've got little water bears now and they've got the newt newt face. Newt newt. Um, so, uh, <laughs> um, but uh, I'm not making any money from this stuff. I'm just using it to raise money for my students to do research. So it'll be used to buy some more SEM stuff or buy some materials for the lab. Um, I, I don't really have a I don't have a pressing need to make five or ten dollars off of a, you know, a throw pillow or whatever. Um, but I do like the idea of putting diatom artwork out there. Um, and I'm kind of excited about the idea that that could go to also fund diatom research. So um, for me, that's a Christmas gift in itself um, that we could take some diatom artwork and make it a little popular and put it on things and um, potentially uh, use it also to help, uh, you know, get my students a little bit more money to do whatever it is they want to do for research. So good cause. So there's the water bear itself that we were looking at earlier. Um, and the droplet is relatively small, but it seems to be holding up so far. And uh, so I don't know if I should try to keep this thing wet overnight, if I should move it back into a different container. I think that's my plan is to rinse it into a different container um, and then transfer some of the material over to 
that same container so that we can keep it separated, but also um, have enough food and natural conditions for the organisms that uh, that we're not denying them anything. And that way the water bear can kind of stay around for a little bit. And hopefully the eggs, if we can keep them around for whatever it is, another 12 days or 13 days, will grow into uh, more water bears. And we can have a little culture of water bears, which would be great. Um, you know, we'll get attached to them, we'll name them, and then I'll, who knows what will happen after that point. Um, <laughs> Newton Lab. Uh, yeah. Oh, you're having connection issues? Am I having connection issues? It doesn't look like it um, on my side. <laughs> An actual Newt Newt Nation. My side, I've got kilobytes per second, 5,000, so, and it's in the green. So, uh, oh, your son's gaming. Well, it's either that or they're jackhammering outside your house. One or the other. <laughs> You're yeah, starting a petition to rename the lab. Uh, well, if I only worked on water bears, I wouldn't mind renaming my lab that. Uh, I think since I mostly work on diatoms, uh, that uh, it's not going to fly very well. But um, I definitely find water bears to be interesting. I just... I mostly look at uh, ancient lake settings, so the uh, while the water bears are cute and fun to look around at living things, they um, they aren't likely to be preserved very well in that setting, whereas the diatoms are. And uh, but we all got to have hobbies, right? So my hobby is looking at water bears. Then so be it. If hunting water bears is a hobby, uh, I'll make it my hobby. I mentioned this before, but you can see right here, this little pink thing. Uh, can you see it? Oh yeah, you can. Um, it's, it's this pink thing right here. That's actually a mite. You can see here some of its uh, antenna and legs. It's attached to this clump of things, but it's actually, I think it's just the skeleton. I think it's dead. Um, but I'm pretty sure that's some sort of little mite based on the shape and the number of legs. And the fact that it's in this sort of lichen sample. The water bear has really moved around. It started off on the top end of the slide, and now it's down here with the mite. Uh, and the nematodes are crawling around in here. And here's the little eggs. So we're not very far away now. They're creeping in on the egg area. I don't have to move very far, which is great. And keep them all together. <laughs> Have I tried checking diatoms from space rocks? No. Uh, I don't really think that's likely to produce diatoms. Um, stream from the PS4 seems okay. Yeah. I have three other gamers living with me, so you feel it. <laughs> a tiny little water bear rug. <laughs> um, I don't know if you mean from the Redbubble site. I think there was an option to get rugs, but um, I don't think I set it up. I think I, maybe I did set up a bathroom rug or something. Uh, I don't know. Those things are hilarious to me. Uh, no, so I, but I did collect some rocks. Um, while, while I was out hiking and um, these I kept in a little bag because they're they're wet and I want to keep them wet um, which I managed to do these are actually covered with diatoms so you can't see them because they're very small uh, but you'll have to trust me that I had uh, scraped a little bit off of one of them yesterday and they were just covered with diatoms that were crawling around um, if you want, I can do that right now. Um, I can scrape a little bit off, and then we can see some diatoms crawling around. If you're tired of watching water bears flail around aimlessly, and uh, and their eggs moving around, we could actually look at some diatoms. I think I was asked to do that by somebody here a second ago. Um, there was a lot of them on just a little bit of material when I was looking at it yesterday. 
So I hope that stays the case. And I'm gonna just cheat and use a little bit of the water bear water, so hopefully there's no water bears in here. Or if they are, they like a diet of little diatoms. These rocks actually smell kind of bad. Let me see what we got. I'm gonna just take this one, move our little slowly evaporating slide of water bears. I actually took it from the other rock, so hopefully this rock also is filled with diatoms. Oh, it is. There's other things in here as well, so it's not just diatoms. You can see some. Uh, that's a gliotrichia right there. Gliotrichia. Look, a oh, gastrotrich, I mean. And, uh,. Some more nematodes crawling around in here. The diatoms are going to take a little second to wake up, but uh, they will start crawling around because I've added light to their environment, and um, that will activate them. So, um, and I don't know if I want to prep these samples, um, but you'll be able to see them crawling around. It looks like maybe they're just drifting, but you'll actually see that they'll start moving in random directions all on their own. Um, yeah, this is a change from the SEM diatom images that I normally show you. Uh, you know, this is the living organisms. You can still see the chloroplast present in them. And um, they've been inside that bag for a little while, so they, you know, they're probably wondering what's going on. Uh, but you can see them here starting to move around. There they go. Still a little spazzy nematode up there in the corner. But um, those things aren't drifting. That's That movement's all occurring. Yeah, they're starting to activate. Um, you can see them crawling around. And something that people, I don't think they appreciate enough about diatoms, as far as I'm concerned is that um, they, I'm gonna turn the light up and see if that doesn't get them going a little, a little bit more. Um, they, most people think of algae, they don't think of organisms that can crawl around on their own, that can animate, but diatoms can. And um, not just that, but uh, diatoms are also extremophiles. <laughs> Confusion a confusion of diatoms. There's a lot of them on there. And um, you can see they're starting to move around. This is a, if you want to, if you want me to uh, give you some names, uh, this is Gyro Sigma. These little guys in here are naviculas, probably. Uh, there's a bunch of Nitsia in here. And uh, some of the other diatoms that I can see that I can easily identify. So for example, this big boy over here is a Cerarella. It's laying on its side. Um, that doesn't usually stop them. Here's a little chain of Fragilaria. Sometimes we see Fragilaria on Dell streams. I should point out if you really like microscope content, can I make my cursor big? Maybe. Um, I should do this uh, squad shout out to all my microscope squad. Here they are. That's um, Tiny World was on earlier, streaming some lake samples. Pacific Plankton will be on Thursday night, um, unless there's some more, you know, jackhammering going on outside of her house. Uh, Dell Maximum, I don't know, is Dell on tonight? I haven't looked. Uh, he usually shows up on, nope, he doesn't stream on Tuesday nights. He'll show up tomorrow night, probably. Um, and then open set, who knows when open set will show up. He just like, uh, mysteriously appears like a wild organism from Pokemon and Fizaria also has been doing a little bit of streaming, um, from her microscopes that she just bought recently. So, um, you should check them out. And I would also point out if you show up in the early mornings or early, like real early before afternoon, 
um, and you're looking for some microscope content, there's a guy who just goes by the name Spider ID who has a stereo microscope and then he puts on pictures of spiders that are trapped. Um, they're, they're dead spiders, but he, he puts them in a stereo microscope um, with these little beads and basically arranges them so you can see them and then uh, identifies them for people. So it's pretty cool. I haven't added him to my list of uh, streamers because we haven't really interacted at all, but I thought his, uh, I thought his stream was really cool and educational. And uh, I think his intention is to try to get people to not be so afraid of spiders. Uh, that's not a diatom right there, by the way. That is a uh, spirogyra. That's a bright green color. But it's actually a really good um, chance for you to get some um, idea of the differences between the diatom chlorophyll pigments so you can see diatoms are usually referred to as golden algae or golden brown algae by some people. And you can see that their chloroplasts are actually sort of orangish, orangish colored. And the um, spirogyra's chloroplasts are these sort of ribbon, um, helix ribbon uh, chloroplasts. And they've got a bright green color. And that's a good way to usually tell that you're looking at a diatom versus something else. There are other organisms with sort of brown or golden colored um, chloroplast, but the, if it's got a bright green chloroplast like this, uh, then it's probably not a diatom. Um, that, that's just not the color that, that they, they make. And the, the sort of, um, these gyro sigma that are here, you can see they have like a reddish or really a golden color to them or an orange color. And if you're looking for diatoms out in the wild and you want to collect a sample that's got diatoms in it, don't go looking for green stuff. Go looking for stuff that has this sort of an orange or brownish color. Um, it's it, it sometimes there's enough of it on the on rocks or on other material on the surface of uh, sort of mud or sand that there'll be enough of it that you can actually see it. But that's the color you should be looking for is this sort of golden color or uh, orange color. And that's really what separates diatoms from the other algae when you're trying to find them. You know, they're so small, they're little dust sized particles. But they, if you get enough of them, like this particular sample I knew was covered with diatoms because I was out standing in the stream and, uh, and I saw there were rocks with like orange colored stuff streaming off of them. And I was like, oh, that's got to be diatoms. It can't be anything else. And you can see this giant algal mat full of junk here is just filled with diatoms of different varieties. And so part of the reason some of these diatoms are kind of slow to activate is they might have been inside that pile of junk. Um, they might not have. They might not have seen sunlight in quite a while, if that's the case. So, as you can see, uh, here's a little rotifer spinning its little rotifer bits, and um, there's a ciliate up here crawling around. Probably uh, here's another one. Sometimes I'll see these. That's a rotifer. You can see it's got a little forked tail. A little forked tail down here. That it's using to hold on. That's how you can tell it's a rotifer. Um, that's not a feature that you'd find on many other types. Uh, the gastrotrix have a little forked tail like that. There's a little um, heliozoan right there, that little thing that looks like a sun. So helio like the sun, and zoan like an organism, an animal. Um, as you can see, there's a little heliozoan. Here comes a ciliate into a field of view right there, some sort of paramecium like organism crawling around. You can see that's sort of a fan of cilia on the front of it that it uses to sort of propel itself around in the water. Um, any droplet of lake water, good lake water, will have ciliates and uh, rotifers in it. So you don't have to usually go very far to, to get a bunch of that stuff. And anything that's got a good connection to the, the bottom of the lake should have diatoms that are like these that are crawling around on the bottom part that, that you might be able to find pretty readily. And other algae, like this green algae that's right here, it's probably a uh, cladophora of some type. Some more of it in here. There's a rotifer. See its little head spinning a bit. Um, I was watching one of these yesterday. There's a bunch of little diatoms like these, these little things right here. 
uh, those little round things are probably cyclotella and the rotifer would start spinning its little well they don't spin them they sort of wave them around the little ciliates next to their mouths and the, all the diatoms would get pulled towards its face and would just hit it and bounce off of its face it was hilarious um let's see sorry uh our diatoms aren't animals or plants they're technically algae um so people put them in a category called proteists but proteist is a garbage category it just means like not an animal or a plant um and there's a lot of things that are microscopic that people just call proteists but they're not that's not like a a real classification it's more like uh, you know, it's like a way of saying what it isn't rather than what it is. Uh, what's a stereo microscope? A stereo microscope is a microscope where you have just the eyepieces and then a lens and then a tray on the bottom. And you can put stuff on the, the tray on the bottom. So if I want to look at that uh, beetle, for example, it's too big to go on a light microscope like this, but it would be perfect for a stereo microscope. Um, usually they have limited magnification, um, total limit man magnification range. Um, they might get up to something like 200 times or 300 times in a really good one. I have a great stereo microscope in the lab that I just haven't hooked up the power to stream to from. I haven't really had a reason to, um, because, uh, I can just put stuff on the SEM if I need to, but, uh, the stereo microscope I have in my lab is actually identical to the one that the spider ID guy uses. It's a really nice microscope. Um, let's see. Come and tour. I'm seeing more people streaming the microscope world in Twitch. Yeah, we have a gang, the squad of people that I mentioned there um, that have been doing it for a while. So a tiny world and Dell um, were people that I started watching when I first started streaming and Pacific Plankton. Um, yeah, dissecting scopes sometimes they're called. Um, Pacific Plankton was just starting to stream, I think, when, um, when I started thinking about doing it, which was uh, late in the summer. I don't know, maybe she started a little before that. Um, so we've kind of come through most of the learning curve together and, um, and made nice friends as a result. Um, and then Fizaria, we've all sort of just been helping along as she learns how to do it. So we've got a nice little community and I really like that, um, that we can. Uh, the image is so clear yeah, uh, when stuff's not moving around a lot, my microscope is really, really nice. Uh, it's only when um, it's when things are big and they start crawling around really fast or swimming around that my microscope does not work so well. And I should also tell you that uh, we're not as close as we could get, uh, not even close to as close as we could get on my microscope. Uh, if you really want to see some of these diatoms up close, we can do that. Um, let's see, I want to open this up a bit, open this up a little bit, and, um, we can get really close to some of these diatoms in ways that you probably haven't been able to do in many other streams, if you've been watching these. So, and actually my lens looks like it's a little bit, I got some- Hey, Maori Salary. Got another sub right there, surprised me again. I need to turn the volume down on this. I think it, it's so loud, it just blares in my face. Hey, octo, octopotamus, octopotamus, octopotamus. Yeah. Uh, you want a microscope so bad, I don't even know where to start. Um, yeah, we have some uh, really good conversations about it. It looks like Pacific Plankton's been all over it for you there. Um, you can check out my Discord, or also Pacific Plankton and, and I were sort of, and, uh, and Dell were giving Fizaria good suggestions for microscopes. So if you're really interested in getting a nice microscope, um, we can make some suggestions. I would say it comes down to how much money you're willing to pay. Um, this microscope costs something like $30,000, so I don't recommend you start with one of these. Um, but you can get a really nice microscope that you can do relatively decent stream from if you wanted to or just to look at things at home um, for maybe a hundred or two hundred bucks. Um, I think the one that Fizaria bought ended up being about six hundred dollars. Um, 
but it's got a whole bunch of extra features and it's a really nice microscope that can get up to a hundred X really a thousand X objectives. Um, so really nice. Yeah. I, if you saw what I actually did, I'm sorry, I couldn't show it, but I actually just took a little bit of a cover slip and I scraped a tiny little bit of the rock onto the cover slip and it was, um, uh, like what would fit on the end of a toothpick, um, that made this sample getting a little blurry because I touched the sample against the water, I think. Um, so uh, there's really almost nothing on uh, the material going in. And, uh, and you can see there's all this stuff going on in that sample. So let me fix some things because we're in water. I want to turn down the diaphragm a little bit and maybe brighten it up just a little bit for you. Um, so this little guy right in here, let's see, let me zoom in on that. This is uh, a green algae called pediastrum, and it's characterized by having a sort of kaleidoscope-like appearance with two little horns that come off of each one of the cells on the outside edge. And that's not a diatom, but a green algae instead. And uh, these sometimes preserve, I find them in, in ancient records. Uh, this is the diatom Melosyra. So the sample was collected in a river, I should say, and Melosyra is a dominantly uh, rheophilic diatom, a diatom that lives in flowing water conditions. Um, some of these things are probably, uh, you know, also quiet water diatoms are in here, but it's, um, it's because it was in an area that sort of had high and low flow where the rocks were, basically. And then... Uh, so there's a whole bunch of different types of diatoms in here. These are ulnaria right here, these long skinny things. Um, that's a melosyra, these are navicula. So the genera for diatoms that are in here are just really sort of immense numbers. Um, these little S-shaped things uh, that are here, those have sort of a curved shape to them are gyrosigmas that are crawling around now. They're starting to wake up. Um, and oh, sometimes these little guys uh, these are ciliates, and you can see inside of that ciliate, the little brown color, those are diatoms. So it's been crawling around in here, finding something to snack on uh, among the, the diatoms that are present. Um, oh, this is so far behind. Uh, yeah, it's nice to show kids. My daughter has this little scope that we sit down sometimes, and I have a sample, and she has a sample. So it's really cool. Um, Let's see, volunteer astronomers around the world for asteroids, is there something similar when it comes to oceans, lakes, observing, recording, reporting? Yes. Um, okay, we'll see you later, Pacific. I'm sorry, you probably left before I got a chance to say bye. Um, the, uh, there are observation networks around for lakes, um, sort of all over the place. So, um, yeah, stereoscopes are great for looking at large inverts and small vertebrates. And uh, and what I'm looking at is much smaller than that. Oh, it's Little Chook. Hi, Little Chook. Um, I should give a shout out to Little Chook. Little, little Chook gets a shout out. Um, Little Chook is a artist and she draws a lot of chickens and um, she's hanging out in our stream all the time. So a uh, friend of the channel and you should check out her work. She does great uh, chicken art and uh, she's been making um, chicken based Pokemon, I think recently. And she did a whole series of uh, chickens in different costumes for Halloween and she's got a great little sort of merchandise store for um, her work. She does all of her drawing on um, an iPad Pro with a with an Apple Pencil basically and then live streams her artwork while she's drawing it which is spectacular. So you should definitely check it out. Um, yeah, 30,000 American dollars. Yeah, you don't need to even spend a thousand dollars for a good microscope. Um, you know, like I said, under a hundred, 
uh, will get you a microscope and under 600 will get you a decent microscope. Um, <laughs> my $30,000 microscope is because I look at stuff for research and I need a special type of um, light uh, for diatoms, which is differential interference contrast. And um, it's what's giving it that sort of gray color uh, when I set the um, contrast to be a little heavier here. And um, I also need a nice camera that will be able to allow us to take pictures that would be publication quality because I sometimes find and describe new species of diatoms. So, uh, oh, uh, can I see a water bear, please? Hi, Lofius, and you can. Uh, give me a second, and I'll switch back to that slide, which hopefully hasn't dried out completely yet. Um, can diatoms be in defense as well? Uh, you mean instead of just attacking? Uh, diatoms don't really attack. They're totally harmless. Uh, yeah, yeah. Let's see. Um, Chukimons, you turned on your sound or something, little Chuk. You're listening for a little bit. Um, how small is water bear? Water bear an animal or something else? Water bears are a type of animal. And uh, let me switch over because I, um, I did have that title and I think it's only fair that I actually put the water bears back on occasionally. Um, let's see, I think it was this little sample. Hopefully it hasn't totally dried up yet. Um, oh, there's a water bear right there. That didn't take long to find. Here he's crawling around. Um, let's see, hopefully you can see that all right. He's right in here. He's, uh, he's really moving. And uh, oh, he's actually connected up to the water, the water bear egg. And the water bear eggs are right there. And the water bear is right there. So when we, oh, look at this. He's chewing, it looks like he's chewing on this dead nematode. I think he's found a nematode and he's decided he's gonna munch on it. Look at that. He's got his little newt newt. He's just sucking right on to that nematode. He's sucking out all of the good parts. Um, hopefully you can see that. The nematode's this thing and it's, I think it's dead, so it's not moving. And the water bear found it Right next to this, uh, this is the molt of a water bear, and those are the little eggs, the water bear eggs that are inside the molt. So when the water bear molts, it, uh, the pregnant water bears or whatever the ones that are about to lay eggs, the gravid water bears, they lay the eggs in the, the molt when they leave their skin behind. And this water bear has decided it's just gonna munch on this thing, look at him. He's like, yep, I found something, I'm gonna eat it. So he's found an old, tasty nematode, and he's sucking out all the good parts there. Um, at least I think that's what he's got. It sure looks like an old nematode, and he seemed to be pretty happy about it for a bit there. Uh, that was pretty cool. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, the worms are nematode worms. <laughs> Uh, and that is a mama water bear, and these are the little baby water bears, which is pretty cool. Um, it's a dead nematode. It's delicious. Uh, I would like to see Anarchy Kitchen try to whip us up something with dead nematodes and make it taste good. I bet he could do it. Uh, what kind of animal is a water bear? Water bears belong to their own sort of phylum called tardigrade physi or tardigrade phyta or something like that. That's basically, they're in their own... They're their own thing, way up at the top, at the phylum level, I think. Um, but they're an animal. They're a microscopic animal. And um, they've got eight legs. They've got a little uh, snout, like a proboscis, that sticks out of their face that they use to suck the juices of some living organisms or to chew on mosses for some of them. Um, yeah, the nematode got eaten. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh, it looks like a weird ghost water bear in the eggs. Yeah, it's just its casing. It's not actually a water bear. Uh, the living organism didn't die. It just uh, 
planted the eggs in its uh, in its exoskeleton and then crawled out of its exoskeleton and left it behind. So those are the eggs hanging out in there, doing their own thing. And the organism, I don't know for sure that it's this one, this water bear that's right here, uh, which seems to have been energized by its uh, tasty nematode treat it had a second ago. <laughs> um, uh, because the sample's a lot bigger than just this little bit. Um, but uh, something like this water bear probably because of the, it, the size of the um, the the water bear uh, exoskeleton is a little bit smaller than this thing. This is actually a little bit bigger. And also, if you look closely, which we can, at the face of the water bear's exoskeleton right here. So let me try to get that for you in a nice clean view. Um, you see these little tiny uh, things sticking off of it? That's the little spines that are sticking off of the snout of the water bear. And there's something like five or six of them, which is the same as the one that we saw. And it has these little uh, cheek things as well that we saw on the, um, the mama water bear that's walking around in here. So if I go back to it and we can get it wherever it went, so as the water droplet starts to dry up, it's easier to find stuff because they're all kind of piled together now. Um, that water bear's in here somewhere. Oh, there it is. Uh, its face is buried in the muck, but if we look really closely at the snout, you'll see it has a little like set of crown of uh, of little flaps of skin or something that are around its face. I don't remember what the name of those things are off the top of my head, but they're the same as this one. They're the same little hairs sticking around their mouths. And also it has two little hairs sticking off of its cheeks that are just like this one. So, and roughly the same size and shape. So I don't think that this is actually the same uh, mama or whatever, but I think it's the same species or very likely to be the same species that laid these eggs. So that's kind of cool. And oh, you can really see that mite. We were looking at this mite a little bit earlier and I told you I thought for sure it was a mite, but you can now see it has eight legs. So one, two, three, four on this side and one, two, three, and one's tucked under right here. And you can kind of see its torpedo shape. Um, it's not shaped like a water bear at all. And so I know that that's not a water bear. Also, if you look at the ends of its legs, water bears have little claws at the end of their legs, always, no matter what kind of water bear you're looking at. So if we look over at this water bear, you'll see it has little sets of claws. Each of their claws is two sets of claws. So there's actually like four little claws on the end of each one of their feet. And even if we look at the molt, you can tell that's a water bear by the fact that it has little tiny claws on the end of its feet. So pretty neat. Uh, this is wasted nematode that got eaten. Um, somewhere in here is also a little rotifer crawling around. Uh, you know, stuff gets lost in the pile of junk down here somewhere, but ooh, I think that's a nematode. Yeah. But as the water bubble starts to contract, everything starts living on top of each, each other. It doesn't have any place it can go. So I probably should move that into its own little container soon so we don't lose it. But I thought it would be good to try to come back to it and let you see the water bear um, for people who are showing up late. Uh, yeah, they molt. Um, that's how they get bigger. So, um, is a tapeworm visible without a microscope? Some of them are, for sure. Are water bears immortal? Definitely not. Um, water bears live, like their living time is measured in months. So if you had a continuously living organism, it might live something like eight to 10 months. Um, however, if they go into their cryptobiotic state, they can be in that state, like in suspended animation, basically, for over a hundred years and can come back uh, and be fine and be viable. So, uh, let's see. <laughs> what a weird dog. It looks like your dog. 
Uh, okay. It's not a spider. It's actually the, it's a mite. Yeah. Can they be trained? I don't think you could train a water bear. Um, I guess you could give it a shot. I don't think it's going to work out, though. Uh, I think they just do what they want to do, frankly. And it's probably not what you want them to do. So I'm going to put a little extra drop of water on this sample because I don't want it to dry out. I'm worried about that uh, little baby, the baby water bears that are in there. And I'm here, I'm gonna make sure I didn't get my lens wet. And try to clean up that 40, 40X just a little bit. I think everybody in here will be fine at least for a little while longer. And then uh, it's a little Arkella. It's all spaced out a little bit more because I put some water in. And the worms are going crazy again. That one's particularly spazzed out. And I could have accidentally added some more water bears. You never know uh, what could happen. in the drop of water that I put in because it came from the same sample. So I'm going to make sure everything in here stayed in here. I don't know where else it would have gone. Who? Oh, what are you? Oh, there's a little weird mite right there. That one's still alive. I found a water mite. He's kind of ugly, but uh, you can see his little legs moving, I think. Let's see what you can see. Yeah, it's this thing right here. It's a little water mite. It doesn't move like a water bear and its legs are uh, got little, you know, like insect leg ends rather than water bear ends on its feet. And have little claws. There's our little water bear friend. He's out roaming around. I put the drop of water on him. He's out hunting. Usually they like to be clinging to something. So I anticipated that was going to happen. Seems to be able to get around pretty well. Those eggs should still be in here somewhere as well. Probably got moved under... Oops, here they are. Everybody's fine. Mama's fine, baby's fine. Oops, we should zoom out. Everything's fine. Okay. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, flatworms, I mean, they probably can get them to do instinctual things. Uh, have I seen a fairy wasp before? I feel like maybe I have. <laughs> a turf war, I hope not. Uh, you want to see the mite more? Well, I'll go back to it. Uh, have I looked at a tapeworm before? No. Uh, what's the microscope where they look and show a water bear like a solid color? Probably a stereo microscope um, because the transmitted light microscopes always basically let you see through things. Whereas the stereo microscopes have a light source at the top. Oh, here's the mite. There he is. It's in the that pile of junk right there. Kind of crawling around. Pretty neat. All right. Well, uh, let's see. <laughs> it showed it like thousands of times bigger than what it showed. Uh, 
What's that one really expensive? Well, it's it's showing it. It's just zooming in. It's not really showing you it uh, any bigger. It's just blowing up the image. So uh, the software does that when I scroll my mouse wheel. But uh, I do think I'm going to call it a night. And I'm going to transfer these little water bearers into someplace safe. And we will be streaming tomorrow from the scanning electron microscope from the lab, probably from one to three. And I'll probably have um, one of these water bears, one of these big red water bears like we see in this sample on the scanning electron microscope. Because uh, I separated one of them out for that purpose from another sample. And um, I didn't want it to do it for more than one, but I think one of them is going to be fine. And uh, it'll dry up so it'll look like a trash bag with claws and a beak. But, uh, you know, a cool water bear trash bag. Oh, you didn't miss anything, Mama. Uh, here's one right here in our field of view. It's clambering around, but I am getting ready to shut down things for the night. But uh, there's a water bear. You can see his little legs and his, his little snoot. And he's curled up around a piece of junk as he crawls across the screen. There he is, crawling. He's saying, newt, 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 newt. Put more nematodes in my mouth. Um, yeah, it looks like they're swimming, but I think they're actually trying to crawl. They're just not doing it very effectively. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you can make a lot of microscope images bigger, but the resolution doesn't get any better. Um, so you're just blowing up the pixels basically at some point. Like we could project the image from my microscope onto the wall and then it'd be a giant image, but it doesn't actually make the image any clearer. And that's really the difference. Um, but I think you can still see a lot more when you make things bigger. So there's that. And um, especially if you can get a low magnification lens, um, you might actually get a better, for these things that are moving around, so my microscope doesn't handle things that are moving around very well, um, you can see how it kind of like freaks out when it's stuff moves. Uh, it's not very useful for that, but, uh, my camera would be, so I'm one of these times I'll probably have to figure out how to mount my camera up here and then my camera would make this look spectacular for you. Um, it's in the future probably. Okay. So, uh, hopefully you're happy about that, uh, shot of the little water bear there. Mama Bon Bon. Um, this sample seems to have a lot of water bears in it, so uh, I have I still have the original material here, and I'm going to keep it wet, and I'm going to keep this sample wet, and uh, I might be back on tomorrow or Thursday for a little bit with some more uh, water bear images if I can find some more that are doing well in that uh, in that sample, and then we'll probably check back in on these um, these water bear eggs that we found there somewhere over here I don't remember where they went exactly you kind of get a landscape and then I screwed up all the landscape when I put the water drop in, in there but there's somewhere over here there's a uh, a whole bunch of little water bear eggs inside of a water bear molt and uh, we're going to preserve those. Here they are. So you can see the little eggs and that's a water bear molt. You can see the, well, let's see when it catches up with me. So here's the little legs for the water bear and that's its head. It's just the molt. It's like an exoskeleton. And then these are the eggs moving around inside of it. So we want to try to keep those alive. Why are they moving? Hey, Amy, Ann, how's it going? Uh, I don't know why they're moving to be honest. Uh, but I'm pretty sure that they're water bear eggs, so, um, thanks for hanging out with me tonight, uh, Disc of Accretion, and for everybody else out there, uh, who's 
been able to hang out with us while we do this little stream. Um, I wasn't planning on doing a super long stream, but it's actually gone on for quite a while. Um, we got uh, these water bear eggs, we saw some water bears, we saw some rotifers. I switched over to diatoms for a little while. We saw some diatoms crawling around, uh, a bunch of nematodes. We got to see a water bear actually eat uh, and like suck some of the juices out of a nematode. Um, so if you missed any of that, you can always go back and check out the video on demand. It'll be up after we finish with the stream. And uh, you can check out some of that uh, pretty cool situation. Here's a little rotifer right here, just on cue, uh, searching around. That's a bedelloid rotifer. And here's our nematode, and here's uh, the water bear eggs roaming around. Here's some more of these spazzy nematodes rolling around in here. Um, but the, uh, the sample with the eggs, we want to kind of keep separated so we can come back to it and make sure that the uh, little baby water bears hopefully one day will hatch we got you know sometime in the next week or a week or and a half uh, we might actually have little baby water bears pretty cool and uh so thanks for hanging out everybody and uh chuck it was really nice to see you uh you know this is uh chuck and i have a really long uh history together when i was in college chuck and i worked together in a, a cd store so um, it's nice to keep up with old friends. Um, we got uh, 15 viewers. I guess I could try to find someone to raid. I don't know that there's anybody on, but um, I can take a look real quick, see what I can find. So we could send you somewhere if there's somebody on. Um, let's see. Mr. Shank, Blake Balance, Cyanide Teacups, and uh, that's about it for people that are right here that we could grab. Um, maybe I'll send us off to say hi to Cyanide Teacups. Quants it how to represent. Yeah. There's usually someone on Twitch I can find. Cyanide's, you know, a favorite target. <laughs> She's usually up late, and uh, she'll be happy to see us. I'm sure she's playing some game. Uh, she's been playing Legend of Zelda recently. Yeah, I think that's what she's working on still. Um, she's being frustrated by being set on fire and stuff. Uh, and Laura, thanks for hanging out. And Amy Ann, it was nice to see you outside of uh, Numb the Geeks uh, channel. I should give a little shout out to, um, to Numb the Geek. can do that I think boop yeah you should check him out um, you know you can catch the video on demand it's not that big of a deal cyanide's always up late um, uh, numb the geek is actually a great musician and uh, and he plays this uh, guitar and fiddle and uh, he does these sort of looped soundtracks he's got uh, live learning and uh, I sometimes will raid him in the middle of the day when we stream from the light micro from the SEM because he's usually on at the same time as me on uh, on Wednesdays and uh, another friend of the channel. So he's a, a great guy. If you see him on, you should check him out. And uh, I almost had him to play a clutch song uh, in, in yesterday's stream. So I was kind of excited about that. But uh, he just played a couple of licks and then stopped. He said clutch tease. Um, maybe I'll get him to live learn one of those, one of these days for us. All right, uh, let's go get cyanide teacups. And I want to say thanks to everybody. I especially want to say thank you to, um, Pacific Plankton, who, uh, is here, was here earlier in the, the, um, the stream. And she was actually watching me when I was on discord earlier, when I was streaming the water bears into my discord channel. <laughs> um, so she's, she was hanging out with us for, for quite a bit. Um, before she must have had to run off and deal with her family. Um, let's see. Cyanide teacups. Cyanide. It's hard for me to type like this with one hand. Let's see if I got it. Oh, I did. All right. So, uh, and we'll go check them out. Um, everybody else have a good night. It's, uh, it's like 1230 in the morning here. And uh, I don't have anything to do tomorrow morning, so it's not a big deal. 
but uh, and I've already got my samples picked out for the SEM tomorrow, so no big deal. But um, we'll see you guys later. If you want to check out the scanning electron microscope stream, it's one to three Eastern time tomorrow, and um, and then again probably on Saturday we'll be doing a sciency more sciency stream. Uh, where we look at diatoms and such. And I might actually s sneak another one in um, this week because I have a little bit of extra time. Uh, my classes are starting to slow down. So, all right, we're going to go raid cyanide. Uh, we'll catch everybody later. Thanks for all of the subscribers, um, Octopotamus, and um, for the raid from Anarchy Kitchen, and uh, all the follows, so Lemon, Apple, uh, Dant, and, uh, and Euclid. Um, thanks for those follows, and let's go raid. Okay, night everybody.